Welcome, everyone. Before we begin the meeting, we will have a prayer by Councilman Henry followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, we'd like to thank you for getting us up another day, getting us through our day. Uh, we'd like to thank you for uh, gathering here this evening. Uh, we also, uh, I also ask that you continue to uh, watch over our servicemen and women here and abroad, uh, continue to watch over our families and our loved ones. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'll call to order the Monday, December 4th, 2017 City Council meeting. Mrs. Donaldson, roll call please. Fitzwater? Here. Graham? Here. Henry? Here. Hussey? Here. Kimna? Here. Mihalovich? Here. Prather? Here. Schreiber? Here. Ward? Here. Wiseman? Here. Item three, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? S second. second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Also want to recognize, are there any scouts in the audience this evening? Okay. Thank you. All right, item four, miscellaneous agenda items. Item A, um, Gail and, or Mrs. Strope and Mr. Grellner will be recognizing uh, Nancy Thompson as the 2017 Kevin Meinhart Award recipient. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, this evening I have the privilege of presenting the Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service. Maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kevin was a dedicated public servant demonstrating his commitment to the community by being actively involved and in volunteering his time to various organizations, including the city's Board of Adjustment, where he served from 1997 until his sudden passing in 2012. During Kevin's volunteer time, he always represented the highest standards in ethics and professionalism. Because of this, the city has expressed their gratitude by creating the Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service. There you go. I don't know what you did, but. Okay, any volunteer serving on a city board, committee, or commission is eligible to receive this award, and nominations come from fellow volunteers, staff liaisons, or city council members. The candidate selected displays public service devotion, excellence, and professionalism, outstanding enthusiasm, and reflects the highest ideals of citizenship in their conduct. I am honored to introduce to you tonight Mr. Bob Meinhardt, who's here. Um, Bob is the brother of the late Kevin Meinhart, and he's here to assist us in presenting this year's award. And also, as the mayor mentioned, Dave Grellner. Dave is our environmental health services manager, and he nominated our recipient this year. Okay. 
This year's recipient has served on the Cemetery Resources Board for over three years. She has shown great leadership in motivating other board members, volunteers, and community organizations to appreciate and beautify the historic Woodland Old City Cemetery. She has reached out to community organizations, including Lincoln University ROTC and the Missouri Governor's Mansion docents to help complete projects. She has also helped to coordinate a GIS project between Lincoln University and the City of Jefferson to electronically map the Old City Cemetery. To aid others in genealogy and historic research, she has spent many hours entering data into the Find a Grave website for persons interred at the Jefferson City Municipal Cemeteries. She has spent many hours planting flowers, resetting gravestones, picking up litter, and generally beautifying the cemeteries using her own materials and labor. She spent countless hours in 2016 planning a historic walking tour of the cemeteries with plans to conduct another walking tour in the near future. She is currently working with the historic city of Jefferson to help restore historic family graves in Old City Cemetery so they are not lost to time. Along with her work with the C Cemetery Resources Board, this person has played a vital role in assisting with the Fire Museum. She began helping with the Fire Museum in October of 2014. She played an integral role with establishing the acquisition process. Her contacts and her experience setting up other museums have been valuable. She has been involved in many aspects of the museum, including getting the displays ready, as well as in the preparation of installing the bay doors. This has been a huge undertaking, and she has never missed a work session. She has worked diligently to make the museum something the city can be proud of. So for these reasons and many others, please join me in congratulating this year's recipient, Nancy Thompson. Congratulations, Nancy. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much. I'm extremely honored and, and, and a little bit embarrassed. I, I really don't feel like what I do is that exceptional. Uh, and I certainly don't do it with the expectation of receiving any kind of personal recognition. But I do feel so passionately about the need to preserve the history in these cemeteries that I can't go at it any other way but full bore. <laughs> and so I thank you for recognizing the importance of this project. Thank you very much, Mrs. Thompson. And we really want to sincerely thank the Meinhardt family for continuing to um, recognize those in the city's boards and commissions that really excel. And uh, we hope that you'll give Cindy our best. I know that she always likes to be here as well. And we appreciate your family. And we appreciate having this memorial for Kevin every year. And Nancy, your work has been outstanding. I always enjoy, I'll open the News Tribune and you'll be in some story about what's going on. And you really do your best to highlight and make sure that what we have in, in our history is not forgotten and in our cemeteries and beyond, and especially even with the Fire Museum. So thank you for all your dedication um, to the city of Jefferson. So um, at this time, I'll present um, the Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service presented to Nancy Thompson in grateful appreciation of your volunteer service to the city of Jefferson, December 2017. So congratulations. Thank you again, Bob Meinhardt, and congratulations again, Nancy Thompson. All right, um, item B, recognize Sheila Perry and Kara Sankey for the, C the CAFR and the PAFR awards. So we'll have Mr. Kroll uh, talk about that today. And I will ask uh, Margie Miller, the Director of Finance and Information Technology, to come forward, and her two team members, Sheila Perry and Kara Sankey, to come forward as well. So I'm... 
Excited to announce that the city has received recognition, two recognitions, from the um, Government Finance Officers Association. Uh, the first, and I'll read it as it's presented, is a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting presented to the City of Jefferson for its comprehensive annual financial report for the fiscal year ended October 31st, 2016. So that's for our audit, and it's from the Governmental Finance Officers Association. So that was the first one that was received. And the second is for what we call our, um, our PAFR, our popular um, financial audit. And um, it is more of an easier to understand document for citizens to be able to go to the website and understand a little bit about what has happened um, as far as the finances of the city are concerned. So this second award is for the annual, the award for outstanding achievement in popular annual financial reporting presented to the city of Jefferson, Missouri for its annual financial report for the fiscal year ended October 31st, 2016. So congratulations to Margie and finance and the city and everybody. Congratulations. That. Um, I also uh, want to note that um, We've been we have not yet been notified of this Distinguished Budget Award. However, I fully expect that to occur. And um, I always think of um, the audit um, announced awards that we just mentioned as being retrospective, kind of a look back, and a budget award being kind of a look forward about what's coming. So um, we look forward to that information as well. And so I am going to give these to Margie. It really is, is really for all the work. There's really a lot of work that goes into um, providing all this information, and certainly thanks to the mayor and council for supporting that level of information for the citizens to be able to look at um, that information on our website and get a better indication of how the city operates and where some of that money goes. So again, congratulations to um, Margie, Sheila, and Kara for all of their work and all the department directors that have put in a lot of work as well. Thank you again, and if council would come back here, we'll get a picture with the awards. Congratulations again. Item C, recognizing the News Tribune's It Can Wait essay contest winners. And I'm very excited to have the winners here tonight. Before I call them forward, they're going to get to read their essays from the mayor's chair. But I would like to recognize Mr. Gary Castor, who is in the audience here, if he would like to come forward and tell us a little bit about this essay contest about It Can Wait. And this is a subject that is very passionate of mine and uh, as you often see me doing the buckle up phone down and, and I really truly believe that it can wait and I hope we all take that to heart so welcome this evening thank you mayor um, we're very excited uh, we had um, our second annual um, essay contest It's partnered with Missouri Press Association AT&T and the News Tribune we had a local contest in which uh, we reached out to area schools we received about 40 entries and uh, through a panel of judges, we narrowed it down to two, um, two winners, a middle school division and a high school division. Addison Ganey, a, uh, a student at Trendy Lutheran, was the middle school winner. And Natalie Schaefer, a Jefferson City High School student, was a high school winner. Um, from there, they had the opportunity to compete statewide. And uh, lo and behold, both of them won the statewide competition as well. So. Uh, we were very pleased by that and to, uh, Thursday Thursday yes uh, we'll all be going to Columbia for their presentation of their awards a tour of the journalism school and a dinner to celebrate their accomplishments so we we thank them and the other students who 
who uh, certainly uh, poured their heart into their essays, and uh, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate with you. Thank you, Mr. Castor, on behalf of News Tribune for all that you do to support this worthy cause. Appreciate this, and we're excited to have the students read their essays. So uh, we can start with um, Addison Ganey, if Addison would like to come forward, and you can just come around back through here, and then we'll let you read your essay from the mayor's chair. And then you can have a seat right here. So welcome, Addison. So nice to have you here. And then you can have a seat right here. And then you can talk into here. Sure. And then this is something that when you're ready to start, we'll let you tap the gavel to begin. And then you can read your essay. So congratulations. Okay, so in the last decade, the practice of phones while driving has become a big concern. A study by Newsday stated that older teens have a higher tendency to use their phones while driving than younger teens. It's hard to convince drivers, family, or friends to stop this habit. One way to help prevent this habit is to download one of the many driving safety apps, apps like text, text Arrest compatible with Android or Drive Safely Pro compatible with iPhone, Android, Blackberry, and Windows. TextRest freezes the lock screen of a phone so that no texts or emails may be sent when driving. Drive Safely Pro is an app that reads all the emails or texts sent while driving and allows you to respond without touching a button. Another way to prevent cell phone use while driving is to tell everyone not to text while driving, every time they do it while they are with you. This is not a reliable way to prevent the practice since you aren't always going to be with them. Another way to prevent this begins years and years before they start driving by setting a good example. Whenever you or your parents drive, do or did they operate cell phones while driving? For most people, the answer is probably no, but for those who have a yes answer, the experience probably made you more likely to text and drive because you saw someone that you respect operating a cell phone while driving. There are many consequences to texting, using social media, and taking pictures while driving. You are more likely to be paying attention to driving, to driving if you are operating a cell phone at the same time. You are mainly worried about texting your girlfriend about where you are going to meet for lunch, liking a friend's post on social media, or taking a picture of a cool billboard you may see than your own safety while driving. You are also probably going to have to keep looking down or glancing over to see your phone, causing you to lose sight of what is happening around you. A study says that a typical crash can happen as soon as three seconds after being distracted. Some, some conscience would be for you to use a ticket, run off the road, <laughs> sorry, some consequences would be for you to get a ticket, run off the road, run into someone else, and many other things that in all can lead to serious injury or even death. I don't know about you, but I prefer missing a text or a tweet less than facing death. A way to find out more about, dri about dist distracted driving and its risks is to go to the website itcanwait.com. Take a look around. It has some pretty cool features such as a 360 view of how distracted driving affects everyone, a 2017 virtual reality tour of the dangers of driving distracted. The website also has a video that deals with distracted driving. It also has cool ways you can help out in your own city or town to help prevent distracted driving. While you're at the website, remember to take the pledge to care for others, share the message, and be aware that you are never alone on the road. And don't forget to follow them on social media. Just remember, not while you're driving. That is wonderful. Addison, that is fantastic. Congratulations on your winning essay. And what I really like about that is you gave us some solutions. You said, of course, you can download certain apps that would be very helpful to prevent using the phone while driving. And then also, if you're in the car, to tell others not to and how it only takes three seconds for, for an accident to occur uh, for a distraction. So. Uh, I really like how you gave and outlined um, the importance, but also solutions to that. So I'm very proud of you. And uh, do you have some family or friends here this evening? If they want to come forward and take a picture, if there's anyone here, you're welcome to introduce them if you want to say who you have with you tonight. Okay, well, I have my grandparents, 
um, my mom, my dad, my sister, and also my English teacher from last year here as well. Fantastic. Um, that is wonderful. Well, if they all would like to come forward and take some pictures of Addison in the mayor's chair, and then um, I'll have Gail take a picture of us too. Um, and then I also have, for all of your hard work, a city coin that you can have too. And congratulations on doing such a great job on this. So, Thank you. Congratulations. So here's your coin. You. And then you, if you all want to, uh, either way, you can come up. You wanna, should they come behind maybe? Or... Okay, well, line, if y'all want to line up here and then um, make sure we can see Addison Haley, there. you're in the way. <laughs> Haley, scoot over. Wonderful. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you. Great thank job you. again. Thank you, and and thank you to the family, too. I know, uh, listen to Addison when she speaks, because she knows what she's talking about. So I'm sure that your family and, uh, and teacher are very, very proud of you. So congratulations. All right. Our next winner is Natalie Schaefer. So uh, if Natalie would like to come forward and have a seat here and read her essay today. Use the gavel when you're ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> so much power. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Texting and driving has caused many issues on the road. Though you may not notice it, many problems can occur from just simply picking up your phone to look at it. Whether you're checking Snapchat, texts, calls, or simply changing the music, anything can happen. According to the National Safety Council, one out of every four car accidents in America is caused by texting and driving, meaning that that split second where your eyes are closed, you are no longer, like you're no longer looking at the road, could be your last. Imagine that you're driving home. Just like any other normal day, the sun is out, the weather is just right, and you manage not to hit one of those crazy suicidal squirrels. You're just cruising down the street, almost home when you hear your phone go off. Of course, the one thing you do is reach over and open your phone to, uh, to see what caused the noise. Little do you know that in a blink of an eye, you somehow manage to go off-road before you can gain control back you're already dead from impact of your car hitting the mailbox and flipping over a few times. To be completely honest, this scenario is extremely realistic. My cousin Brandon Higgins of Holt Summits, Missouri was actually in an accident like this. After losing control of the car, he was flung out the windshield with serious injuries. He was transported to the hospital and pronounced dead not too long after. Brandon never got to know the son he was going to have. He never got to see his girlfriend or his mom to say his goodbyes. He never got to see the hurt that our family felt. We can only hope that he is watching, watching his son run up to his grave with a smile and know that that is his dad. We hope that he's watching his little brother grow up to do whatever crazy teenagers do nowadays. We hope many things and so do others. If only, that's the one phrase many people think of. If only I tried, if only I helped, if only he waited. Why would anyone want to put their family in pain when you could have waited? No mother wants to watch her child die before their eyes. And no person should die because you thought that text message, Snapchat, FaceTime was more important than your life and others. Stop and think before you pick up your phone. Think of who you are hurting if, some, if something was to happen. Think for at least once in your life. Don't be a dead man walking. Be smart, pull over, and be smart and wait. What's more important, your life or that message? Don't get caught in your stubbornness and end up being one of the 1.6 million people in texting and driving accidents. Be smart and take the pledge to never distract to never drive distracted at itcanwait.com. Safe driving. Natalie, my excellent essay. My heart goes out to you and your family. And I know when I first read both of these uh, essays in the News Tribune, it, it is so touching, very emotional. I can't imagine um, what your family has gone through. And I appreciate you sharing. And it's really the way to be strong and help others and um, you know when you think about one in four accidents like you stated in your essay and and you know what it can do to families and you know if only and so 
you know, really you're able to say if only and hopefully every single one of us in this room and beyond will take that to heart and know um, that it's not worth it. And, um, you know, it makes me want to send this to our, our state lawmakers and say we're one of only three states that does not uh, ban texting while driving for um, 21 and over. And that is certainly unacceptable. And when you hear stories like this, it really makes you um, think strongly. And whether there's a law or not, um, it's something that we can all take to heart and we can all um, know the, the if only story that you told. And you're very brave to come up here and read it and share it. And I, it means a lot and I appreciate you doing that. Um, so I hope that we will never forget the words that you said today. Um, so appreciate you being here, Natalie. Do you have some uh, some friends and family in the audience yes. today too? I actually have my two grandmothers and my mother here with me. Welcome. Well, if they would like to come forward, we'd love to um, have them up here. And I'm sure you're very uh, proud of Natalie um, and her essay and being able to come up here and, and read it. So uh, thank you. And I'd like to present you also with a city coin. So uh, congratulations and, and thank you again. Thank you. Very uh, important story. Thank you again to News Tribune for hosting that essay contest because these stories need to be heard and very proud of Addison and Natalie for their excellent essays and their families for their support and friends and teachers for being here and let's not ever forget those uh, essays. All right, item five, uh, public hearings. There are none this evening. Item six, appointments by the mayor. There are none. Um, item seven, presentations from staff, consultants, and invited guests. There are none. Thank you. And then item eight, announcements by mayor, council, and staff. Um, starting with our four committee meetings, um, if you look at jeffersoncitymo.gov, you can see a complete schedule. And do check that out because with December and the holidays, a lot of meetings have been shifted or canceled due to the holiday schedule. Are there any committee meeting announcements this evening? Councilman Mahalovich? Our finance committee scheduled for next week has been uh, canceled. Uh, I assume that the staff will continue to send us out the, the pertinent information, correct? Okay, to the members. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Molman has an announcement about the upcoming filing for city offices. Yes, uh, <coughs> filing for city office opens uh, next Tuesday. Uh, generally, um, we do not allow candidates um, to enter the building until 8 o'clock when filing starts. However, there is a Board of Adjustment meeting that, uh, that morning, uh, which starts uh, at 7.30. So the uh, building will open at 7.15 to accommodate the Board of Adjustment. Uh, because the building will be open, we will allow all candidates to enter the building at that time. However, uh, actual filing do will not start until 8 o'clock in the Boom Bancroft room. Boom Bancroft room will be locked until 8 o'clock when filing starts. But all candidates are welcome to enter the building starting at 7.15 that morning. Okay, thank you for that uh, clarification. And uh, Mr. Greffrath from Parks has an announcement about the free classes at the link this week. Good evening and thank you. Uh, we are staying very busy within the department. The memberships continue to grow at the link, and we're staying um, actively busy with basketball tournaments, basketball leagues, volleyball tournaments, and volleyball leagues as well. We do have free exercise classes this week for anybody that wants to come in and participate in those classes. We offer 11 different classes, have five different instructors, so we encourage everybody to get out and try it. We have seen some of the telecommunication operators uh, the past couple days as well, so we encourage more to attend as well. And then not so uh, shiny news, I guess you would say, that we did lose the cross-country bid. I think everybody's well aware of that, but we do 
we host one more year, November 3rd we will host and we'll, we'll give it our best shot again and uh, when the bid process comes back up we will certainly try to get it back in Jeff City. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Greffra? Okay, and hopefully we'll get that back. I know that's very important to Jefferson City. And um, I will get to one of those free classes, so I hope that the rest of council will join me at a class. Um, and then um, I do want to mention, too, I know I skipped over appointments by the mayor since we didn't have any, but I'll mention since we're talking about committees, the administration committee met uh, right before the pre-meeting this evening, and uh, one item of business was appointments, and so the Human Relations Commission has a slate of appointees, so that will be a subject on next council meeting's agenda, so that will be coming up then. Um, and Councilman Schreiber is going to announce he will be doing some bell ringing. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, thank you. Uh, members of the various Lions Clubs in Jefferson City will be ringing the Salvation Army Red Kettle Bell. We'll be manning all the kettles around the city of Jefferson this Friday. So uh, I'll be there from uh, from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock and I think from 12 to 1. So I've got a two-hour shift. Uh, Sam Bushman will be up there as well. Uh, Carlos will be doing it. Rick Prather will be doing it and several others. So be, sh be sure you get to one of the kettles around town because the uh, Lions Clubs around uh, Jefferson City will man every kettle that day for the entire day. So that's something we take a great pleasure in, in doing every year. So hope to see you then. It's supposed to snow a little bit, so that'll help. Thank you. <laughs> that'll make it festive. So I will see you there. And uh, over the weekend, uh, we had little Hudson that came here. He had the lemonade stand uh, for uh, hurricane relief. And at the mayor's Christmas tree lighting, he saw the Salvation Army and people ringing the bell. So he asked his mom, do you think I could ring the bell? And she said, I'm sure they would let you. So on Saturday, he did a two hour shift at Hobby Lobby. And if you haven't seen it, go to my Facebook page because I took a video. And I'll tell you, Councilman Schreiber, he was dancing and he had some great moves. So I think that that, I'm just throwing that out there, that that's kind of how he really had some success with his. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. Well, I'll come and check that out. So, all right. And then for my announcements, uh, oh, let me start though with Chief Schofield. You have a few things to talk about tonight. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the first is uh, two weeks from tonight, uh, December 18th, the Fire Museum, in association with the Lynn Volunteer Fire Department and the Jeff City Fire Department, will be hosting a uh, commemorative event to commemorate uh, the 60th anniversary of a uh, fire that happened. Uh, here in 1957 up on High Street, the Newberry Five and Dime store. And uh, that'll be a memorial event um, that uh, we'll start at uh, 4.30, oh, doors will open, and then a very short event there about five. Plenty of time for folks to make it back over here for the uh, council meeting that's gonna follow. The other is uh, we also, um, after our public safety meeting last week, we, um, we announced that we'd be having some public input sessions for the fire station two. Uh, project and that will take place at our current station two at 2400 East McCarty Street that'll be uh, two different times so that people can make it there the first one will be on Wednesday December 13th from 4 to 6 and then also on December 16th Saturday uh, from 8 30 a.m. to 10 30 a.m. Uh, folks are welcome to stop by drop in give us some input we'll have some uh, displays there that will show uh, some different engineer architectural renderings of the proposed fire station for folks to talk to all of us about and get their feedback. Thank you. Um, I have a few announcements. First of all, we had the mayor's Christmas tree lighting on Thursday night, and I do have to say the tree is outstanding. Parks and Rec has outdone themselves. The theme is a storybook Christmas, and so they had the Grinch theme, and it just looks beautiful during the day uh, with all the colorful ornaments. Um, I think what they said is they combined ornaments from all the past years. This is the 12th annual Christmas tree lighting, and so they were able to combine and really come up with something beautiful and colorful, and it, it looks really great. And then the night of the um, event, we had uh, Salvation Army there. We had the Helias Catholic Choir and the Jefferson City Symphonic Band was there, and it was amazing uh, entertainment, and park staff and Parks and Rec just worked so hard uh, on that event, and it's becoming something that the community looks forward to. There were so many families and kids, and of course Santa was there, so it was just really wonderful. So uh, my thanks to everyone who put that together. So definitely go and enjoy the Mayor's Christmas Tree. It's at Rotary Centennial Park on Bolivar Street, and it will be lit up through uh, the holidays. So 
you can see it there through Christmas, so please enjoy that. And thank you again to Parks and Rec for their outstanding um, job on that. The next day, of course, was Living Windows downtown from 6 to 9 p.m., and I think we probably had a record crowd downtown due to the great weather, and I know a lot of city departments worked um, to make that happen, too and offer their services and then uh, the christmas parade was saturday night anything to report on any feedback on that uh, mrs wiseman um we had 115 entries um it was a great event um everybody i think had a really great time and thanks for everybody for coming out and i thank you specifically to jcpd for uh work in the crowd and closing the streets it's a really tough job i know that uh i know that uh, they have to deal with a lot of tough situations that day so well, thank you. It was very festive. Perfect weather. Uh, my last announcement is the Polar Plunge. Like I talked about, I will be doing this on Wednesday night. As people said, hey, Jefferson City, we don't have a Polar Plunge. So we're going to do something a little different and unique because we want to enhance what they're already doing in Columbia and the lake. Uh, so what we're doing is this Wednesday, December 6th at 4.30 p.m. in downtown Jefferson City. So Sheriff Wheeler and I, here's Sheriff Wheeler's face here on this bucket, mm -hmm. Sheriff Wheeler and I are kind of co-chairs for this event, and he has agreed to bring the hazmat sprinkler. And he assured me that you will get completely as soaked as you will jumping in a lake through this hazmat. I don't know if Chief Schofield, if that's right or not, because I said if I run really fast, I don't think I'll get soaked. But anyway, so I am part of this. So we're going to have our little buckets, and I don't know which one you think is better, the mayor's bucket or, or Wheeler's. But I'll leave these up here, and if anybody wants to contribute, or you can go to somo.org backslash plunge Jeff City. So anyone who raises $500 gets this great opportunity to plunge, or give $500 for somebody else to plunge if you don't want to. Uh, and uh, I believe that, uh, well, we have Fire Chief Schofield is going to plunge. He's already agreed. So come on up here, Chief. I have a little, you can take your donations in the fire hat. And I think Councilman Mahalovich has stepped up. He's got a hat too, so um, why don't you throw this on, and then I, I we're gonna. For dramatic purposes, I should wait to put this on. They just have to come to the bullet To see you wear it? Okay. Well, let's do a quick That's selfie with Mahalovich yeah. and his hat, so we can post and share. Okay. So I, let me see how we can get. Okay. So you get behind me now. All right. So can we see? Oh, this is good. All right. Can you see? <laughs> okay. Okay, one, two, three. One more. Okay, so it's official. Well, so. I do. And, um, now we can't hear you, so you got to talk. I got one small announcement: is that uh, I looked at the tally sheet today, and the mayor needs a little help. So I'm combining forces with the mayor. All right. And we'll be plunging together. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. So council, mayor, together one bucket awesome <laughs> all right you heard it here so you are going to be plunging it's just a hazmat sprinkler no big deal you won't get too wet <laughs> completely soaked all, bucket of water. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right it's on carlos i think madam mayor they said you had to go through the sprinkler each time for every dollar raised oh I'm is that sure. how it works <laughs> i'm learning new things about this uh, every time so uh, i will pass around the flyers if you haven't already so please contribute or show up just for the show of it Okay, so any other announcements of council this evening? Councilman Schreiber. I inadvertently forgot that uh, Matt down there, Matt Schofield, uh, he's, he's signed up for three hours to ring the bell. So he's one of our newer Lions Club members, so we didn't want to leave him out. So he's going to do three hours, and uh, he said he'd do CPR on me if I went down or anything. <laughs> so, you know, so Fantastic. Matt, I'm sorry I forgot you. He's a good one to have on the team, so thank you, Matt, for... Chief Schofield for ringing the bell. So, all right, item nine, presentations from the gallery on specific bills or resolutions. We have nobody signed up for that. Consent agenda item 10, is there a motion to approve? Any further discussion on consent agenda items? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 11A, bills introduced. 2017-93. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, changing, amending, and modifying the zoning map of the zoning code of the City of Jefferson by rezoning 1,120 square feet of land addressed 
as 1707 Stadium Boulevard from RS4 Single Family Residential to CO Office Commercial. Mr. Barron. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, to orient you to the location of this property up on the screen is a map. Uh, the property is located at the corner of Southwest Boulevard and Stadium Boulevard. It actually consists of two properties there that are highlighted. The rezoning would rezone a small portion of the, uh, the residential property uh, from single family residential to commercial office. And the reason is to allow for the construction of a parking lot back behind the house on Stadium Boulevard to serve the office building there on the corner. It was recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission and is scheduled for a public hearing on December 18th in, in this room. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Barron? All right. Uh, 2017-94. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Chapter 19-401 of the Code of the City of Jefferson by the removal of parking prohibited on the east side of Southridge Drive between Bubba Lane and Sun Meadow Lane. Mr. Bangy. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is an ordinance that would actually allow parking back on the street uh, on Southridge Drive. Central Technologies requested it. Um, they have adequate space in their parking lot for their employees, but sometimes they have um, uh, trainings that sh which uh, bring additional people to the building, and so they've asked that they uh, be allowed to park in front of their building along Southridge Drive. And so this bill would allow that park, would remove the, re, the prohibition for parking, and so they would be allowed to park there. Any questions? Thank you for that report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Item 12, bills pending 2017-92. An ordinance approving a plan for an industrial development project for Axiom Plastics, LLC, consisting of the improvement and expansion of the company's existing manufacturing facility and the acquisition and installation of certain real property therein, authorizing the City of Jefferson, Missouri to issue its taxable industrial development revenue bonds, Axiom Plastics Project, Series 2017, and a principal amount not to exceed $26 million to finance the costs of such project, authorizing and approving certain documents, and authorizing certain other actions in connection with the issuance of the bonds. Mr. Mullman. Thank you. This bill um, approves a program under Chapter 100 for industrial development with a company called Axiom Plastics LLC. The bill provides partial uh, personal property tax abatement uh, for seven years and partial property tax abatement on real property uh, for uh, 15 years. The bill uh, approves various documents necessary to uh, effectuate the Chapter 100 program on this, uh, uh, for this uh, particular project. Uh, those documents include a trust indenture, lease amendment, bond purchase agreement, and a performance agreement. Uh, with us tonight, um, Missy Bono with the Chamber of Commerce, who uh, <coughs> represents the city in uh, uh, economic development uh, uh, situations, and then uh, Mr. Rich Wood with um, Gilmore and Bell, who acted as bond counsel, and Mr. Evan Fitz, who is a representative of Axiom Plastics. Um, Ms. Bono and Mr. Wood um, have some brief presentations to the council on this matter, and so I will turn it over to them. Thank you. Welcome. Glad to have you here this evening. Thank you. As Ryan mentioned, my name is Rich Wood from the law firm of Gilmore and Bell. We serve as the city's bond council. I just want to spend a few minutes uh, giving you a kind of a brief overview of Chapter 100, talk about the plan for Axiom Plastics, and I, and I think Missy is going to maybe show you some pretty pictures of the, of the project. Um, the ordinance on your agenda tonight will approve a Chapter 100 plan and then the bond documents for the Chapter 100 transaction. Uh, before approving any Chapter 100 transaction, state statute requires that you prepare a Chapter 100 plan and a cost-benefit analysis and then send that to the affected taxing district so they know the impact of the project on, on each taxing district. That was done in this case. The notice provided that you would be considering final approval of an ordinance tonight. Uh, chapter 100 is a method of providing uh, property tax abatement on investments in property for industrial and commercial projects. Uh, tax abatement can be provided under Chapter 100 on both real property improvements and then the purchases of personal property. Uh, through Chapter 100 uh, financing, the property is owned by the city, uh, which makes it essentially exempt from taxes. Uh, and then the property is leased back to the company. 
the lease agreement between the city and the company requires the company to use the bond proceeds uh, to pay the cost of the project and to make payments to the city in amount sufficient to pay the principal and interest on the bonds. Uh, the city has no liability with respect to payment on the bonds since the bonds are payable solely from the lease payments to be made by the lessee. Uh, these bonds will not be sold to the public but will be bought either by Axiom or their lender. Uh, the lease provides that the city, uh, I'm sorry, that the company will indemnify the city with respect to the city's ownership of the property and the city will be named as an additional insured uh, for purposes of liability and casualty insurance for the project. Uh, the Chapter 100 plan and the performance agreement that were, uh, I believe, included in your packet for tonight provide the terms of the tax payment to be provided. Um, this project consists of both the acquisition of real property improvements to that real property and then also the purchase of equipment for the facility. Uh, the real property investment is expected to be approximately six million dollars. Uh, the equipment purchases are expected to total approximately twenty million dollars. Uh, abatement on the real property investment will be provided for a period of 15 years at a level of 75 percent. Uh, so the company will make pilot payments to the taxing districts in an amount of 25 percent of what otherwise would have been paid in taxes. Uh, the 15-year abatement period is uh, expected to be 2018 to 2032, sorry. The abatement on the investment in personal property is tied to the depreciation class life of the assets, which is seven years. Uh, so the abatement on the, the personal property will be 75% for seven years. Uh, the investments in the personal property will be staggered over a three-year period of 2017, 18, and 19. So the last year of abatement on the personal property will be 2026. Uh, the company will also make pi uh, pilot payments to the taxing districts in the amount of 25% of what otherwise would have been paid in taxes for the personal property. Uh, the cost benefit analysis which was prepared which shows the impact of this project on the taxing districts um, shows that without the project the taxing districts would receive uh, over the abatement period of 2018 to 2032 tax revenue of approximately $307,069. Uh, with the project, the taxing districts will receive over the same period pilot payments for both the real property investment and the personal property investments uh, equal to approximately $961,657. And then the value of the abatement to the company uh, it, in, in the form of uh, uh, not having to pay taxes is estimated to be approximately two million dollars or a little over two million dollars. With that I would answer any questions or let Missy do her presentation. Thank you. Any questions at this time? All right. Thank you. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If you remember two weeks ago um, from this evening, we talked a little bit about this project, so I won't go into all the details again, but I think we had some slides, um, some pictures to show. No? No? No pictures? I guess not. Okay. <laughs> um, well, this has kind of been a very fast project, very um, quickly moving. And so I, what I wanted to do tonight was show you some before and after pictures of the spec building that the chamber built um, several years ago and then compared to what it looks like today. Um, but if you can envision, um, they, they have completed the 50,000 square feet and they hired a local contractor, James Stark Construction, um, back in May. And at one point in time, we had dozens of contractors on the site. We still have dozens of contractors on the site um, and about 85 people working for those contractors trying to complete the building. And so the 50,000 square feet is complete. They started in November on the additional 75,000 square feet. They're expanding that to the east. And um, if if you have been out to the industrial park, the partnership business park, they are just located to the west of Scholastic. So it was 11 acres, about 11 acres that the chamber owned that we built the 50,000 square foot building. So very excited about this project. Um, as of last Friday, they had um, been manufacturing about 500,000 bottles per day. So 500,000 bottles per day 
for a local uh, company in Jefferson City, then they also serve markets in St. Louis and Kansas City. So they are at about 80 um, employees uh, to date, and they will be hiring 75 in the next several weeks as well. So very excited. They're way ahead of their time frame. If you remember last time I said um, in year one, they would be employing 48 people. Year three, they would be at 70, and they're already at, um, at 80 today. So way ahead of their time frame. And they just announced this project in May. So very, very quick. So I hate that I don't have pictures for you, but maybe I can send those out to you um, tomorrow if that's OK. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to take any questions. That would be great. And it's very impressive, the amount of growth in, in this project. And, and we appreciate that. That's good news. And, and the pictures, I know I saw them. Uh, and I was very impressed when you showed those because I feel like it, you really do get that wow factor. It's very impressive. So we'll make sure. And I think we have them. So what we can do is tomorrow we can forward them to the council. Mm -hmm. I'll have uh, Mrs. Donaldson do that Perfect. for us tomorrow. And that way, council can see those. Uh, and then we can make sure and have those available to any members of the press that may want to see them as well. Very so. good. Any All questions right. for me? Great. Thank you, uh, right. Mrs. Bono. Thank you. And any other uh, presentations this evening? And you're welcome to introduce yourself if you'd like. Just very briefly, uh, Evan Fitz with Paul Snelly Law Firm out of Kansas City. I appreciate you having me here tonight. Uh, as Missy mentioned, she's done a, a great job shepherding this project. It has been very fast moving. So fast moving, in fact, that they did not have a Missouri uh, attorney until a few weeks ago, but sought out my assistance to help them with finalizing the Chapter 100 process, which of course is in very good hands with Ryan and Gilmore Bell. Um, we appreciate all of the city's support. The, city, the uh, company asked me to attend tonight to let you know that, and they're very thankful to be making this investment here and happy with a, a new home for their operations. So. With that, we appreciate it. I can answer any questions you have. And again, thank you for having me down the, uh, this evening. Thank you. Does council have any, uh, Councilman Mihaljevic? Yes. Well, welcome. And, and I, this, is a, this has been long. We've, we've heard inklings about it. And so this is a big deal for Jefferson City. And we're welcome uh, a new partner in our city. Uh, the amount of jobs is amazing. The amount of bottles you're, you're producing is incredible. And then the investment and uh, the, uh, the amount of payback the district will get and uh, taxing entities uh, made it a, a win for everybody. So uh, congratulations, uh, Chamber, who's our arm for economic development, and congratulations for a, a good start. Uh, I'll be sure to pass that on. Uh, they sent their uh, regrets that they couldn't attend personally this evening, but again, do appreciate the support, so thank you. Thank you, any further uh, questions of our speakers this evening? All right, um, thank you, Mr. Fitz, Mr. Wood, and Mrs. Bono. Um, now uh, we will take up 2017-92. Is there any council deliberation discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, roll call, please. Graham. Aye. Henry. Aye. 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 Kimna. Aye. Mahalovich. Aye. Fraser. Aye. Shriver. Aye. Ward. Aye. Wiseman. Aye. Fitzwater. Aye. Bill passes. Thank you. Item 13, informal calendar, nothing on the informal. Item 14, there are no resolutions. Item 15, we don't have anyone signed up for presentations from the gallery, correct? Nope. Okay. And then item 16, is there any council and staff discussion of presentation topics? Okay. Item 17, any new business? Item 18, any unfinished business? Item 19, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. All right, all in favor? All right. Nice hat. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you.